Welcome back to Morning Live. But of course, as I told you, Allah, before we took a break, we want to talk about the issues of Al Shabab and uh, the doctors in Cuba. And of course, it's over a month since the two Cuban doctors were abducted in Mandera County by armed men suspected to be uh, members of the Al Shabab group by efforts and, uh, and efforts by the Kenyan government to rescue them are still ongoing. Herrera Correra. And of course, he's called Herrera Correa, rather, and Landy Rodriguez went missing on April 12th, 2018. And now it has emerged the two foreign medical practitioners who, among 100 other imported from Cuba, are being held by kidnappers in Somalia. The abductors had agreed to release the medics after lengthy negotiations, but demanded 150 million shillings as ransom in exchange for Correa and Rodriguez's freedom. Intelligence sources revealed that the doctors were being held in restricted area somewhere in Jubaland, Somalia, where they had been spotted alive. In studio is, of course, Mr. Dennis Mtumbi, a security expert, who will be taking us through this conversation, a very sensitive conversation, because now, some time back you mentioned, first of all, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Braha hey, himself. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> some time back you mentioned they might be offering some medical services to the locals. Yes, yes. This turned out to be very true. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, yes. ransom. It's mm -hmm. a different ball game right here. Mm -hmm. It's something people expected, mm -hmm. but look at this. The bigger picture of ransom, that means you're empowering these guys. Mm -hmm. So what's your opinion? Of course, we've been playing cool about ransom. Mm -hmm. um, some military personnel, we don't negotiate with the uh, terrorists. Mm -hmm. But you see, with that ransom, they finish them. Yeah, brother, sometimes when I uh, tell you I'm a prophet, you need to believe me, but it's by the grace of God. <laughs> but anyway, back to professional <laughs> matters. Back to matters. <laughs> wow, okay. Back to professional matters. Mm. Uh, I'm investigating um, um, something that um, has been generating and something that I am keen that uh, will um, get us to a critical solution on matters terrorism or counter-terrorism. Okay. And that is the economy of terrorism or the economics of terror. And just us following the money trail and whether it's all about the money or geopolitics or weaponizing religion or, or, or you know, just issues that have never been historically resolved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so my worry is when really ransom is involved because you don't know how deep uh, uh, you know the cartel or the networks of ransom yeah. are yeah. because they could sit within our very own government it's true uh, you know because when the ransom is shared 150 million uh, to be absolutely honest is that it precedes uh, critical discussions and that is going to be shared by who yeah. and the fact that you may have <coughs> just a, a, you know a homegrown insurgents who um, you know abducted the, the doctors and then sold them off for critical discussions uh, with Al Shabab. And so those critical discussions, you don't know whether it was exchange of weapons, uh, exchange of skills uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, skilled experts for, for constructing and building bombs or VBIDs or whatever it is. This is a very critical discussion for the government of Kenya. And then it means that the 150 million could be in exchange of anything. Mm -hmm. Insurgents might have <coughs> abducted these guys, okay. sold them over to, uh, you know, Al Shabab. I don't believe the abduction was done by Al Shabab. Mm -hmm. I believe it is by very own Kenyan insurgents. Okay, you understand. Mm -hmm. In exchange for weapons, skill, affiliation, for many other things. So what we need to find out, I don't think we need to be, and and life here is paramount. But the beauty is that the doctors are alive, and I don't think the Al Shabaabs will kill them anyway, mm -hmm. because those doctors are more useful, alive, to them than anything else, and, and than them being dead. But exactly what were the discussions? What is in exchange, and what is the risk and the threat to us? Okay. Uh, uh, you know, even before we go deeper, because I tend to think it must have been in exchange for something. Because what happens is that uh, abductees are actually butter trade, you know. We are selling you over to a larger group mm -hmm. that has more muscle, mm -hmm. more resources, in exchange for something we dearly need. Sure. So the insurgents here, do they need weapons? Or do they need the uh, tactical teams that are yeah. well skilled yeah. in building bombs mm -hmm. or whatever it is? We must interrogate intellectually and in all wisdom why they are 150 million mm -hmm. and who exactly set to benefit throughout the entire of that pipeline mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of the ransom. Mm -hmm. And I'll repeat this again. The economies of terrorism is something that we critically need to look at. 
it's also attractive to a government okay. that is fighting terrorism itself mm -hmm. because look there are allowances there are procurement opportunities mm -hmm. there's a lot of things why are we not interested in killing this thing called terrorism and it keeps on growing bigger and bigger and bigger are there characters within government that are pleased mm -hmm. with the resources that we get from partners with the resources the immense resources mm -hmm. that we are portioned from our budget other than them being moved by the securitization of our nation mm -hmm. and the risk to humanity and the preservation of life are there people who are principally interested in the money and i was very shocked when i saw just the paramount thing coming from this is okay. ransom okay and for me, it smells like a huge, big, dirty fish or rat. Now, the government is saying that um, they don't believe the negotiations going on because now there's something strange. The elders in Mandera are taking part in this negotiation. Absolutely, yes. The elders in Mandera. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. I understand some, there's a, some form of professionalism and arbitration in this mm -hmm. situation, whereby mm -hmm. maybe we send our professionals mm -hmm. to go talk to these guys. Yeah. But look. Not even the police. The elders are those bringing a report back to the police. Mm -hmm. This is so strange. You know, uh, it's, 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 a, it's just the dynamics mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of what terror have, has, has morphed. Uh, it's just strange that the elders know where these insurgents are. And they, they also have information. They know. They even have, they're giving medical support to the where teams the on the ground. Where the camps are. Yeah. Why can't we go for these people? That's a critical question. Mm -hmm. Why can't we raid that camp? But maybe there's a threat of maybe oh, wait, 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 any attempt to go save my, them. My brother, we have killed. the most skilled <laughs> professionals, even in Africa. Okay. We have the most skilled, uh, uh, you know, intelligence network. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about a global association. Why are we looking as though we are, a, we are cautious not to upset mm -hmm a certain status quo or a mm. certain social network. But remember, you the, understand? Cuban, the Cuban doctors have their families back at home. Now, they're also involved in Look, this. Look, let me tell you something. Yeah. The Israelis rescued a hundred and something people from Kampala. In Tebe. We're in Tebe. We have had many, mm. many raids. Mm -hmm. Many raids across, across the world. Yeah. It's something that we can do, brother. It's something that we can do. Okay. A month down the road, mm -hmm. elders have been sent. It means, let me tell you what something. If elders have been sent, I'm telling you, the government must have been tracking location, whoever who's been sent. Are they even and, interested? And how did they even come to know mm -hmm. that those guys are in this particular camp mm -hmm. and even they, they did surveillance and the doctors are working and the doctors are whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Would the interest of this government be to demolish the camp and arrest the perpetrators mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for perpetrating crimes against humanity or to further uh, the negotiations. I mean, I, I'm an expert in kidnap, kidnap and ransom, but what exactly is our desire no. as a country? Hostile. And that's the reason why I, I am absolutely convinced that there are quarters in the government mm -hmm. that are interested in sustaining, not finishing, sustaining okay. uh, the furtherance of, okay. uh, of, 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 of counter-terror activities. Look at hostage rescue mission and uh, the impact. Of course, it's very risky. Any hostage rescue mission, ever risky. Because now, when you guys actually noticed, you are on your way coming, the fish is, guys. It's also risky. As much as we have the best personnel as far as intelligence, of course, they'll give information, even tactical, battalion, and all these troops. We're talking about special forces, even the rangers. Look at the impact. These guys, sometimes, maybe, they want, uh, you have your own opinion about, maybe, uh, some government uh, kind of uh, traces in this situation. But look at the hostage rescue mission. Do you think we have the uh, capacity and the pedigree to go all the way? Because now, risks are also involved. The truth of the matter is that based on the training that I'm aware that, uh, you know, the military and the special forces have had, uh, they have the capacity, the requisite capacity and the requisite intelligence, the requisite equipment and funding to, uh, you know, just uh, carry out, uh, you know, anti hijack missions. Mm -hmm. It's possible for us to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether we have to look at it, whether is it a greater risk to save okay. or is it a greater risk to pay? I think it's a greater risk to pay mm -hmm. because what happens is that you put an entire nation in danger. Yes, true. That. And I'm not trying to say that uh, uh, the lives of the two doctors are not of paramount importance. They are absolutely of paramount importance. But we are hijacking to save them.
I mean, we, 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 we are carrying out the anti-hijack mission to save them and, and to save the nation. And I said, this is 150 million that is being paid. It is of, it, it's, that's a serious injection to the operations of, of, yeah. of, of a terror gun. Yeah. When Kenya is at its highest alert currently, and given the fact that, by the way, the month of Ramadan for us is a, is, is, is a higher season yeah. of, of, of any, uh, uh, you know, terror activities. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we have to weigh. Uh, and, and this is when, uh, you know, the, country, uh, the country's military organ is tested for its uh, aptitude, its astuteness, its training. You understand at the end of the day. And I believe if KDF with its uh, special forces, if it's never ran a mission like this before, I think it's time for them to do. And by the way, we have also development partners. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have the British Army, uh, we have the French, we have uh, the Americans who are already operating within that region. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, <coughs> who, by the way, actually very strange. somebody sitting in Las Vegas. Very strange. Somebody sitting in Las Vegas. Okay. They don't even have to go there. Somebody sitting in Las Vegas they can give us happened. even facial recognitions, yeah. can give us up-to-date activities. That's true, that. Every intelligence, as of now, somebody sitting it on a screen in Las Vegas mm -hmm. can actually give us up to date mm -hmm. information uh, information mm -hmm. of how many insurgents are in that camp the size of the camp the health of the doctors what exactly is happening uh, you know they can be able to give us you know uh, you know uh, hour to hour mm -hmm. situational rep yeah. of what exactly is happening mm -hmm. for us to be able to uh, plan on a, a, a counter hijack mission. Yeah. We have everything we need. The truth of the fact is that why are we in, why are we so interested in preserving a status quo uh, within upsetting some quarters uh, and, and sending elders to do the work of government? Mm -hmm. I am not uh, averse mm -hmm. to us, uh, you know, uh, using their skills. But at the end of the day, it is like we're interested in preserving something. Are we, are we uh, going yeah. back to the likes of uh, the art of war, whereby some benefit, some lose? And uh, even the, co the economics part of it, in economics, they say that war has uh, to benefit some people. Now, look, you've mentioned Americans. They are partners. Yeah. They actually fight with us in Somalia. Um, we've gone to so many trainings with Americans, the Britons. But look at the bigger picture here. Um, is there something maybe amiss that Kenyans don't understand in terms of even the intelligence, information, the war that is being fought? Is there some things that Kenyans don't understand? Because now, when, when you tell us someone is maybe someone has the information about everything, that means as Kenyans, we need to also have the information. So what's this, this, this the, the truth somewhere. of the matter is that we actually we have all the information that we require. We have absolutely every information that we require. We have, uh, uh, you know, we, we have the requisite equipment. We have people who've been trained across the world in the best military schools ever. Mm -hmm. Whether you're talking about the military school in India or Europe or the U.S. Or Jordan. You know, we have yeah. that. Yeah. And anyway, if we don't, we can always import and we can always negotiate mm -hmm. and we can always partner at the end of the day. So there's something amiss. I, 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 there's, something there's something amiss. There's something so <coughs> gravely amiss mm -hmm. in this. And it must be the economy of terror. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that some quarters, even in government, benefit mm -hmm. uh, uh, from the monies that are paid by our development partners, the monies that we are pushing from the budgets mm -hmm. and to me really uh, you know terrorism has a huge economic gain mm -hmm. uh, to some quarters mm -hmm. and the very fact that terrorists actually seek to devalue uh, the economy of, of, of this nation so mm -hmm. at the end of the day and the fact that some nations also use them to to play a huge part in geopolitics okay. uh, you know so we are looking at 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 at, at you know a ragtag army okay. that has you know, their friends could be our friends. Mm -hmm. We don't know. That's okay. the problem. The other fact is that the U.S. is upset with uh, Cuba and with uh, guys I like understand. Maduro so has at been the end of the day. Of late, eh? so, but you know, they can help us an aspect of humanity at the end of the day. I, I <laughs> believe I that if, if, so. if we want to rescue, uh, if, if we want to rescue those okay. doctors today, okay. We can actually rescue them by eight in the morning. This all day. right, all right. Yeah. We're taking a short break. This conversation continues right here on Morning Live. When we come back now, we want to dwell on the art of war. As much as you don't understand what is happening, there's that aspect of beneficiaries. Who are these people? We won't mention the names, but generically, we will actually touch base on who they might be. All that after a short break.
right, welcome back to Morning Live. Yes, the discussion is all about the Cuban doctors who are abducted, and the story is coming in is that locals went and, of course, supported them alive. So we failed to understand why locals and not our security forces. And also, it's actually trickling down to a conversation whereby there's some people, maybe in the government quarters or intelligence quarters, that know what is going on. And the 150 million ransom is just something all about PR. There must be something missing. Ernest and Tumbe, mm -hmm. as we finalizing this conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, solutions to this, because now as much as we're asking ourselves a question, there must be a gap somewhere. There's also the angle of trust. Yes. Now, the government and trust. Who can we trust here? The locals have seen these guys. Surprisingly, the locals are the ones initiating this conversation. Not the government are betrayers. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, solutions to this now. Yeah. Public trust. Uh, you know, first of all, the government, the government must be utterly tough because then if if they don't then this will actually set a precedent on whether kidnaps will increase in the country and we have two types of kidnaps we have the express kidnaps with uh, kidnappings uh, for ransom which is absolutely well planned and it has an end to it and then you have the opportunities uh, the opportunistic mm -hmm. uh, kind of kidnap for ransom this looks like it's express uh, kidnap for ransom whereby there's an expected end now i doubt whether the government knows the expected end but that is what they need to interrogate okay. because then then that then will advise them then how they interact uh, uh, with the criminal gangs and mm -hmm. the, the, the the terror the terror gangs mm -hmm. uganda pursued the kidnappings of uh, you know the american tourist okay. and i think in 3 4 days or there about you know, uh, okay. you know the, the, the guys who are, who are brought to book and, uh, and, and, and the, yeah. the, 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 uh, you know, the tourist that was kidnapped Just to cut was, short. was brought home. Just to yeah. cut it short. Mm -hmm. Cuba-U.S. relations. Yes. And, of course, we are being powered by the U.S. intelligence also. Mm -hmm. Now, look at the Cuba-U.S. relations and, of course, now, which is trickling down to the Kenyan-U.S. Uh, relationship also. Cuba and the U.S., <laughs> and actually, well, news. the administration is not saying yeah. eye to eye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, not eye to eye. Mm. Now, Kenya, U.S., friendly. Yes. Friendly zones here. Yes. Now, do you think there'll be that, that humane angle from the U.S. backed, uh, maybe troops? Mm -hmm. And of course, um, just, I, I understand there's some issues back in Cuba and the U.S., yeah. at the border issues, so many issues since, since the Castro days. Mm -hmm. But look at this. Obama tried, he failed. Trump came in. <laughs> back to square one but look at these two doctors mm -hmm. cuba u.s kenya u.s mm -hmm. there must be something wrong over there well the um, you know america's greatest uh, foreign doctrine and uh, um, the, you know uh, diplomacy doctrine is actually counter-terrorism and uh, so that is what they offer you they immediately you their yeah. friendship is based on that yeah and uh, i believe that the the, the u.s has uh, a very serious uh, uh, humanitarian duty okay. uh, to fight terrorism Absolutely. across the board. Yeah. And uh, really, you know, the doctors are not the government and the doctors are not Manduro uh, that the U.S. is, uh, yeah. is fighting or speaking yeah. against. Yeah. And I think they have a duty uh, as, as an organization that really respects the rule of law and uh, that really fights to preserve life. Uh, for them that to see that they offer uh, Kenya every help yeah. uh, that is required, but I don't know whether Kenya has asked. And I, I'm saying this, perhaps the 150 million is of interest to somebody sitting in the government. So why will they seek help from a country that will come and rescue the guy in one day and they are about? And, 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 and it's unfortunate just to see this pro protracting for even over a month yeah. uh, and there about because I don't think um, uh, kidnappings for ransom uh, negotiations yeah. must be protracted to that level okay. uh, and that nature. Okay. And I wonder what skills they're using. I'm not trying to talk the government down. Okay. But at the end of the day, you want, to, uh, you want to ensure that you finish this as fast as possible. So yeah, that also, sure. you don't bring exhaustion into the process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and also you don't build gaps because the longer the period, the, the more gaps you create yeah. and they're about. And I think <coughs> there has to be a very strong communication from the government that if you try this again, you will basically suffer death or a bloody nose. There has to be a way that the government sends a, a, a very strong picture okay. to these thugs and these ragtag armies mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, if you touch anybody that we are related with, yeah. if you touch a Kenyan, will come for you with 
everything that we have. Okay. I don't agree to this soft approach. Mm. I don't agree to it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and this is the first time that we're seeing the government negotiating with terrorists. Mm -hmm. They used to say we don't negotiate with terrorists. Mm. The very fact that they are sending the elders to go and negotiate with them mm. is, in, in, is in indeed showing that, uh, you know, the government of Kenya is tolerant yeah. Uh, yeah. to yeah. terror gangs. Mm -hmm. And we must refuse this and refute this by all possible means. Okay. They have to go against these thugs by everything mm -hmm. that we have as a nation. Okay. And that would then help us to communicate to these terror gangs that, you know what, we take no prisoners and we hold no bars. And, and that has to be the procedure that we deal uh, with terror gangs there about. Okay. Sometimes PR goes all the way and says, oh, we didn't actually uh, maybe use any ransom. But when you look deeper into the situation, ransom was made. Mm -hmm. Remember, as I mentioned earlier, the family is actually watching. The families are very concerned. Absolutely. Maybe they're even in the country yes. trying to also negotiate this mm -hmm. thing. But look at this. Um, life and ransom. Mm -hmm. There's money here, but there's so much like effects of this money being released to the other side. Mm -hmm. You never know who you're giving the money. Yes. Maybe there's just some people, locals, who are doing this. Mm -hmm. But look at the impact of these negotiations. What if the money is given? What if the money is given, then uh, the country then is in more danger, technically. And as I said, is that the abduction was done by local gangs. <coughs> and basically, Kenya, we have... Confirmed. One of the local gangs? Yes. Okay. I am accurate. Okay. I can say that as a security expert, <laughs> okay. accurately. Not Al-Shabaab. Not Al-Shabaab. Wow. Uh, because Kenya, we have a grave problem with homegrown okay. uh, radicalization mm -hmm. and, and, you know, uh, homegrown gangs. Mm -hmm. They are here. They are mm -hmm. our brothers and sisters but, 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 who've been recruited to work against us. What's the story us? about that, that you know? helping um, the locals as far as now uh, the, the medication is concerned, even training of the medics? You know, first of all, the uh, kidnap was absolutely strategic because... You know, these terror gangs, they suffer a lot of casualties. They don't have, ac they don't have access to Medicare. They're interested in kidnapping uh, professionals who can help them, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a matter of technology or building bombs or repairing their vehicles or treating their sick or, you know, uh, even accountants. They're yeah. interested now in attracting professionals. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> what it is that we, that, that, you know, radicalization has, uh, has, has, has various levels. Mm -hmm. You have the recruiters uh, who basically then pass the knowledge and there's a term uh, that we call them. And then you have, you, you have the victims who are being recruited, mm -hmm. uh, who are being drawn into this doctrine. So the tragedy is that, you know, you might also have a doctor who's kidnapped and okay. two months down the line, mm -hmm. they've signed themselves up to this kind of doctrine. Sure. Uh, so you're trying to rescue somebody who doesn't want to be rescued. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, uh, you know, because th they, they might just go there and find a bigger uh, reason to believe those yeah. guys yeah. Uh, and their doctrine and what they are fighting for mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, you know, you, you don't know these things. But the truth of the fact is that... Uh, you know, as a nation, we have to have a, a proper, uh, a, we have to have proper policies. We have yeah. to have proper policies within uh, our security organs of how we deal with uh, uh, kidnap for ransom, of how, you know, our counter hijack uh, strategies. Okay. God forbid, next it might be, uh, you know, a, a Kenya Airways flight. And what are we going to do? Uh, so it seems like we had no idea of the procedures and the processes of if something like this happened. Okay. Uh, it seems like we, have, we had no foresight. Even when we were posting doctors into such, uh, uh, you know, high, high uh, risk areas, and they're about harsh environment areas, mm -hmm. and you know, high risk areas, we didn't know. Yet there are pe persons of of very high value okay. uh, to us because that is what the, the you know terror gangs and local gangs are interested in. Okay. So this was a calculated move, <coughs> but we need to ask ourselves what exactly is the end motive? Okay. Did the local gangs sell these doctors? to Al-Shabaab, mm -hmm. and in exchange to that, did they get weaponry, skills, yeah, even yeah. a level of finances, yeah. you know, at the end of the day? Because you cannot be asking money when you're in Kenya. Suddenly, it will be easier for us to find you. So there has to be, uh, we, we have to be able to unearth the intent, mm -hmm. and we have to be able to, to, to draw a scientific map okay. and see what if we give them this money, what is the risk to us? Okay. You know, because if you look at our, our, uh, our vulnerability as okay. a nation, okay. we are absolutely vulnerable to this, based, given on the fact that our radicalization, uh, uh, you know, matrices are way up there. Mm -hmm. I attended... Um, 
a conference the other day, you know, uh, hosted by a few international partners, and I was a speaker, and we were talking about radicalization, and you tend to, uh, to imagine the gravity of the problem, and the fact that the government looks like it's giving this thing that, that is of, of serious impetus to the <coughs> stability of this mm -hmm. nation, mm -hmm. a cold shoulder. Yet we haven't seen anything uh, thematic or even anything policy-based or law-based that's going to fight and prevent radicalization mm -hmm. or even intervention strategies and that above. Okay. So we are actually sitting on something that looks like it's crumbling, okay. yet we are actually mm -hmm. negotiating with these terror guns. All right. To me, okay. as an expert, mm -hmm. it is absolutely counterproductive mm -hmm. and absolutely unacceptable. Mm -hmm. That is not the way I want to be represented as a citizen okay. of this nation. Okay.